Hey folks, Zero here, hope you're well. Uh, and this week I wanted to talk about my barrel. Uh, pretty much had, finally had a chance to get back up there uh, to do a little bit of work on it and everything like that. So things like treating the wood, uh, you know, filling the cracks in between the planks of uh, two by sixes, uh, replacing the roof, unfortunately. I'll talk a bit about that. Uh, amongst other things there. Um, so yeah, had a chance to get back up there, avoid the buggy season, as I mentioned, and uh, last time up, it actually wasn't too bad. Just in the late night hours, you'd have a few mosquitoes and things like that, but yeah, pretty much ready to get back out there uh, somewhat regularly and uh, make some progress on it. So without further ado, here's uh, kind of what we did with the barrel. So we start off by treating the wood. Uh, the, root, the wood right now is just actually standard two by six spruce. So over time, it'll probably, you know, take in water and rot and things like that. So we really had to treat the wood itself. And for that, I actually used a lifetime wood treatment. Um, uh, some of my friends in the East Coast have actually used it for their entire homes and things like that and kind of swear by it. You put it into about four liters worth of water. Uh, you mix it around really well and it just basically looks like dirty water. And then you basically take a paint roller or a paintbrush and just start brushing it onto your wood and everything like that. Um, from their MSDS online and things like that, it's a metal salt and they claim that it seems to be uh, non-toxic or anything like that. So yeah, I was just kind of going nuts with it. It seems like it went on really well. Uh, it does turn your wood a bit gray and after about an hour we were seeing it turn gray and things like that. It's supposed to change the substance of the surface of the wood itself uh, to make it, you know, essentially rot proof and things like that. So fingers crossed, uh, we'll see how that works. Next up, we basically had the chinking or the filling in of the cracks of the two by sixes themselves. Um, for that, we've you know kind of given the barrel a few months now to kind of age and things like that. And so the wood should, in theory, be kind of drying and things. And so the cracks actually ended up getting bigger from when we actually built the barrel and things like that. Uh, and what we did was we actually got some backer rod, which is sort of like a gray styrofoam and things like that. I think we had about a quarter inch and half inch uh, thickness. And we basically just use that and squeeze it into the cracks and stuff like that. And then we use the energy seal chinking stuff there. Uh, we bought that from Canadian Log Home. It's relatively expensive and, and, and uh, it doesn't actually, the tubes don't actually go very far. Um, I think they cover about 16 linear feet and things like that. So we were having to change after having going between the seams of two and a half uh, boards and things like that. Fortunately, without killing our hands with, you know, an automatic caulking gun, we actually bought a mechanical uh, Milwaukee one, and that was a huge time saver slash hand saver and things like that. So that was absolutely fantastic. That was, of course, Richard's bright idea. So, you know, the man's incredible. And uh, yeah, ended up basically uh, chinking up uh, both sides. And yeah, the barrel's pretty much, all the cracks are pretty much sealed on that thing at this point. And then from there, we made the door. Oh, hey, bud. Uh, and then from there, we made the door for the barrel itself. Um, so we basically measured out the fittings and stuff themselves. But, and then with some two by fours uh, and using a pocket hole jig and stuff and you know, punching some pocket holes through the two by four stretchers and things like that, uh, we ended up piecing that bad boy together, uh, dry fitting it into the hole for the door itself. And uh, yeah, things were looking good. So from there, we took a, a sheet of half inch plywood, threw that bad boy on top, screwed it down, uh, cut it according to the edges with our circular saw and effectively we had our door. Uh, the one thing that's missing of course is for any sort of an outhouse toilet type situation there's always kind of the iconic uh, crescent moon that's there and stuff like that. So I took my little Home Depot barrel, traced the outer edge of the circle and then gave myself a little ghetto interior cut there uh, and then after having drilled a hole through it and then using the jigsaw, I was able to cut out that uh, crescent moon and yeah, basically had my little uh, moon door there. Threw that bad boy up, attached some, uh, attached some hinges and Bob's your uncle pretty much had a functioning door on her barrel and yeah, it's looking awesome and stuff like that. Now of note and what was unfortunate for us was that the polycarbonate roof that we had had on there uh, previously, um, we found a bunch of holes in it, unfortunately, and there wasn't any sign of rocks, there wasn't any sign of major branches or anything like that, but we have had some really crappy, uh, thunderstormy, haily weather, and we suspect it's hail that actually cracked right through that. So unfortunately, it didn't even really last a season for us. Uh, but fortunately, on site, uh, with my metal roofing that I bought for the A-frame cabin itself, uh, we actually had a bunch of spare uh, tin roofing laying around. And so we threw up some of that uh, for the time being. We don't quite have enough. 
Uh, so I still have to go back to Home Depot and pick up another sheet to, to offset the opening that's left there. But uh, yeah, gonna basically be replacing it with tin and we'll have a finished up roof sooner rather than later as well. So that's, that's really it. It was, you know, quick, uh, quick day in some plus 30 degree Canadian weather. It was super hot, but the A-frame and the barrel are somewhat in the shade. Um, we're basically in the forest and stuff like that. So that was sweet. Um, next up really is, you know, finishing that, of course. We got a little more trim in the cabin to do. And I really want to get at decorating the interior and having that whole thing uh, being taken care of. One thing I really gotta work on too is that if you look at the grass and stuff like that, holy crap, it's totally overgrown. And so what I have to do next to is uh, probably mow it all down. And I'd like to put a bit of a gravel road in there. Um, yeah, deck's still coming up and things like that. So I'm cooking up some recycled skateboards into a fun project right now. And, and fingers crossed, I'll hopefully have that done in a week or so as well. And uh, yeah, it should be something fun to update by then. So appreciate it and all the best. Take it easy. Peace.